Hey guys, so they announced the full list of BAFTA nominations on Thursday the 18th of January, so it's time for me to give you my final predictions as to who I think the nominees are going to be in pretty much all the categories. The only categories I'm not going to do in this video are the shorts, and the only reason for that is because I've not seen any of the shorts, I've been so busy, I've not had time to watch them, I've not really had any time to do any research on them, so at this point it would just be, you know, a, a guessing game, you know, a shot in the dark, guessing who I think is going to get into those categories, but I do have like, you know, some informed opinions on all the other categories, so I'm going to give you my predictions for all the categories other than the shorts in this video. Uh, yeah, some of these are going to be in a bit more depth, some of them I'm just going to fly through because, yeah, I'm off to Switzerland in a few days' time and I'm just trying to get as much content recorded now, so I've got some stuff to edit whilst I'm there and post here nice and early. So yeah, while we're in my room right now, this video will be coming to you from Switzerland. I am going to be very busy while I'm in Switzerland, but if I do have some downtime, I will do a live stream reactions to the BAFTA nominations at some point on Thursday or Friday, depending if I've got some free time or not. Anyway, Anyway, let's get started. We're going to dive right in with best film and we do have all the long list categories now as to who's potentially going to get in here. Now it's just like whittling it down to five or six or however many nominees each category has. In best film it's five and the 10 what we got given for the long list was fantastic. If this was our 10 for um, uh, best picture of the Oscars, I would be a very happy bunny. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be, you know, 10 for 10. And now I've got to pick five out of this 10 to go. Uh, with the BAFTAs, with Best Film, the five usually do align with, you know, the top contenders for Best Picture of the Oscars. So it makes sense to go for Oppenheimer, Killers of the Flower Moon, and Poor Things Here. The last two slots, there's a bit more leeway. But Barbie does make a lot of sense here. Barbie does seem like, you know, it's in the top half of the Best Picture contenders, I'd say. I could see Barbie missing here, but it would be very sad if no films directed by, you know, women this year got into Best Film at BAFTA, and it was a tremendous year for female-led films, so I, I'm gonna put Barbie in my five. Question is, who am I gonna give the fifth spot to? Because there's a lot of good contenders here. I could see Anatomy of a Fall getting here. I could see The Zone of Interest getting in here. And I could also see Andrew Haig's All of the Strangers getting in here because the passion for that film here in London, in the United Kingdom has been very audible. Like people have been really talking about this film here. While I know it's a shoe in for best British film, um, could it crack the top five at uh, in best film? Maybe, um, but I do think because of its niche subject matter, I think it's more likely we're going to see one of the you know, Oscar contenders get in. So I do think we're going to see a foreign language film get in here, or a film not in the English language. So either The Zone of Interest or Anatomy of Fall seems like the most likely contender. Anatomy of Fall is a more palatable movie, I think. It's also you know, directed by Justine Trier, so another point for women if we see a two female directed films in here. However, The Zone of Interest is directed by Jonathan Glazer, who is British. The film is a British film as well, so that kind of does give him a little bit of an advantage here. I feel like he's got home turf advantage here. Uh, and while I do think Anatomy of a Fall is a stronger contender for Best Picture of the Oscars than The Zone of Interest is, um, I do think maybe BAFTA is going to champion The Zone of Interest a little bit more. The subject matter is a little more harrowing, a little bit more, for lack of a better word, disturbing, but you know, it's, you know, it's historical, it's accurate, and it's also weirdly timely as well. So um, yeah, I'm actually going to give the fifth spot to the zone of interest for best film. It's a bit of a gamble, but yeah, it's just how I'm feeling in my gut. If all of the strangers did show up here or Anatomy of Fall, not going to be upset, going to be very happy, love both of those films. But uh, yeah, I've got to predict what I think is going to show up here. And I think the zone of interest just has a little something extra, a je ne sais quoi to get into best film at BAFTA. So yeah, those are my five for best film. So a best director at the BAFTA, is they have six slots here and what they do is they divide it evenly amongst male and female as well as um, non-binary uh, filmmakers as well. So I'm just gonna say this now guys, expect there to be one big snub in this category, okay? I know there's six slots but it's it, it still means that we're gonna have, you know, one shocking omission missing here and I think it's gonna be like one of the big three male um, directors that everyone's kind of expecting to be here, like uh, Christopher Nolan, Martin Scorsese, and Yorgos Anthemos. It feels like one of them is going to miss here, in my opinion, but I don't think it's gonna be Christopher Nolan. I think he has a lock for this. Like, he has just got everything working for him now. He's begun his sweep. We already feel like it's gonna be Christopher Nolan's year. So uh, yeah, while I feel confident on who I know the winner's gonna be in this category, it's the other five slots we're a little, we're a little bit more um, challenging to predict. But when it comes to those last two male director spots, it's, even, it's gonna be a combination of Martin Scorsese, Yorgos Anthemos, Jonathan Glazer, or Andrew Haig. It's gonna be two of those four, and yeah, the reason like Andrew Haig or Jonathan Glazer could get in here is again because 
they are British. They do have that home turf advantage in a sense. Whereas uh, Lanthimos and Scorsese are probably bigger names in the world of cinema. So they know that they have the brand recognition, name recognition, and a lot of respect and long, long careers in a sense. Obviously, Martin Scorsese has the longest career, uh, 81 years old, and yeah, Kills Apartment being one of his most beloved films is a very good chance he's gonna just get in here because he's Martin Scorsese and people just love him and he did make one of his best films ever in his career. I love Kills Apartment, but I can see an outcome where Martin Scorsese does get snubbed here, which feels crazy to say because he is a legend, a titan of cinema. But just last year, you know, another legend and titan of cinema missed here, which was Steven Spielberg for The Fablemans. He didn't get in here, you know. Someone who's very well respected and beloved, you know, synonymous with direction and great cinema. So, mmm, there's a chance Scorsese could miss here. BAFTA really do love poor things, like it is a British film as well. So, yeah, I feel like they might go all in on poor things. They really like to favorite. So then, and you know, everyone loves the poor things as well. So I, I, it's gonna be weird to see Lantham must miss here. Um, but, uh, yes, uh, then there's also <laughs> Andrew Haig and Jonathan Glazer. Oh, yeah, Jonathan Glazer just has something that, that thing that makes me think, oh yeah, BAFTA will nominate him here. I think there's a good chance they will. Andrew Haig, as much as I want to see it happen, I would want to see him in Best Director. I think he's deserving. Some of my favorite scenes of the year were in my favorite film of the year, All the Strangers. That, the way he shot that bed scene was just absolutely cute with um, Andrew Scott and Claire Foy and Jamie Bell. Just how he shot that was absolutely beautiful. One of my favorite scenes of the year. Uh, and, but I don't think he's gonna get in, sadly. I think he'll get acknowledged in screenplay, but um, I think, yeah. For whatever reason, I don't think Andrew Haig's gonna get in this year, which just breaks my heart. If he does get in, I will be jumping for joy because I absolutely love the man. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna rule Andrew Haig out. Greetings from Switzerland, guys. Uh, the reason why I'm cutting in here is because uh, I wasn't happy what I recorded back in the UK, so I need to make some amendments to what I said. Originally, I was gonna predict uh, Christopher Nolan, uh, Lanthimos, and Jonathan Glazer is surprising here because he's British. But I'm having a really difficult time trying to like justify leaving Martin Scorsese out. I feel like it's Killers of the Flower Moon is too good of a movie. It's too good of a, you know, display of um, Scorsese's skills as a director that I feel like he would just trump uh, Jonathan Glazer just because he's British. Uh, I know it's a very well directed film, The Zone of Interest. But yeah, it Killers of the Flower Moon, you know, it's just Martin Scorsese, the peak of his powers. And uh, Jonathan Glazer obviously has a lot more career left in him to go and will get even better than this zone of interest. So yeah, I still think Martin Scorsese is gonna get in. I have a feeling like Nolan and um, Martin Scorsese will get the two most votes and be automatically locked in. I'm actually predicting for the men now, it's gonna be Christopher Nolan, Yorgos Anthemos and Martin Scorsese. But I can see an outcome uh, where there's a shock snub of either Martin Scorsese or Yorgos Anthemos and like Andrew Haig or Jonathan Glazer gets in. I was going to originally predict something like that, but uh, now that I've had some time to sit on it, I don't feel great with it. Uh, and I'm just gonna take the easier pick of going with Martin Scorsese, Nolan and Lanthimos. Uh, but if Glazer or Haig does show up, then yeah, I'm gonna be slapping my head. <laughs> and then for the women in Best Director, it's the obvious three to me. Um, Justine Trier for um, Anatomy of a Fall, Greta Gerwig for Barbie, and Celine Song for Past Lives. I feel confident in those three because those are the, you know, the, the three films that are very likely gonna get into Best Picture at the Oscars. And so they've had, you know, a lot of visibility, they've had a lot of discussion this year. Yeah, they're just on everyone's minds, I think. Uh, so I think they're the three ladies I see getting in here. There is an argument for Molly Manning Walker to get in here, uh, but how to have sex. But I'm seeing her as a legit contender to win uh, in the debut category, outstanding British debut. Yeah, I feel like they'll probably spread the love around a little bit more and honor the other three and Molly Manning Walker will get in elsewhere. So yeah, those are the three I'm going with for the ladies. Um, Trier, Gerwig and Song. <laughs> there was a lot of babble there. Let's move on to the next category, which is uh, Best Actress. Okay, so I'm expecting the big three to be in here, you know, for the award season, which is the Stones, obviously, Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone our front runners at the moment. And then uh, Sandra Hula, I think is also getting in here. I think there's a lot of love and respect for Anatomy of a Fall, did well at the Globes. BAFTA really liked Anatomy of a Fall as well. It's the Palme d'Or winner. So yes, it's just got a lot of that. And Sandra Hula, yeah, I think is a nice, comfortable third place here. I think she's getting in. It'd be weird if she's not, if she's snubbed, I will be very gobsmacked. Then it's the other three slots where I'm a little bit torn on. Like you'd think Carrie Mulligan would be a shoe in. While I thought she would be a shoe to get in because also Carrie Mulligan is British, 
the love for Maestro has cooled a little bit, and she was snubbed for Promising Young Woman, uh, but yeah, I still think she's gonna get in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put her in at number four. There's some good options here, uh, but I'm gonna go with Greta Lee for Past Lives and Vivian Oprah for uh, Rye Lane. There's an argument that Mia McKenna Bruce could show up here. She did very well at the British Independent Film Awards. She won Best Actress there. Maybe she could squeeze in here, you know, British territory. But again, um, Mia McKenna Bruce is also in the rising star category and has a chance there, I'd say. So yeah, my guess is they'll probably spread the love around a little bit and uh, give the sixth spot to um, Vivian Oprah rather than Mia McKenna-Bruce, who already has a nomination in Rising Star. So yeah, that's what I'm going with. Those are my six for Best Actress. Best Actors next. Uh, so yeah, let's go with Killian Murphy, yes. Uh, Andrew Scott, yes. And Bradley Cooper, yes. I uh, feel pretty confident on those three. Paul Giamatti and uh, Jeffrey Wright seem like logical picks to pick here, but I don't feel as confident on those two for some reason. It's just something there which makes me feel like I could see Paul Giamatti getting snubbed. I could see Jeffrey Wright getting snubbed. I hope neither of them do, but um, yeah, I, I am putting them in my uh, six here. But I am just a little nervous, like maybe one of them could miss here. Um, yeah, just for whatever reason, I just have a gut feeling that maybe Paul Giamatti might, be, might miss, or maybe Jeffrey Wright might miss. I'm hoping it doesn't happen. I just want to see them place everywhere, and even at the Oscars as well, for both of them. Uh, and then the sixth spot is pretty tough. Like there's an argument for, Barry Keoghan as well, like Saltburn being a British movie and all, and his performance was quite discussed heavily, um, very fearless, and you know, he's been on an upward trend recently with Banshees. But I'm actually gonna go bold and predict Teo Yu for Past Lives, which may be an absolute foolish prediction, but I feel like there is a lot of love for um, uh, Past Lives, and it's sustained its relevancy all year. People just really like Past Lives. And I know it's not really winning in a lot of awards or whatnot, but I do predict Greta Lee getting into Best Actress, and I know T.O.U. hasn't really placed elsewhere, anywhere major, but I feel like BAFTA could be that one place where he just gets that one nomination, where it's just like, oh, this is where you get nominated. Like, uh, endowed in mass, just showing up at the BAFTAs, is like, yes, she got in somewhere, thank God, you know? And I could see that happening for T.O.U. I don't think he can win it, but I do think, like, uh, they'll they'll want to try and make the category as diverse as possible, and yeah, if they've got him in, it adds a little bit of representation as well. So I think yeah, Tiau could just sneak in here. I, I hope he does. It's a wonderfully understated performance. Maybe Coleman Domingo could surprise here, but uh, Rustin didn't make a whole lot of noise in the UK. It just uh, kind of came and went that movie. I'm glad to see Coleman Domingo has been placing in most places, but I feel like he was gonna miss anywhere. It's probably BAFTA, so. Yeah, I'm gonna be bold and go Teo Yu, but uh, if it's Common Domingo, good on him. Okay, so next is uh, Best Supporting Actress, and I'm just gonna put the three in that feel most assured, which is <laughs> Divine Joy Randolph, Danielle Brooks, and uh, Emily Blunters, of course. Yeah, she's on the Oppenheimer Express train, and she goes along with it, absolutely. Choo choo. <laughs> then it's the other three spots where, who do I give this to? I've been saying ever since I saw Oliver Strangers that I could totally see there being a quartet of nominations for all the actors and all of the strangers just because of how beloved that film is. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give the fourth spot to Claire Foy. Um, I know she's unlikely to get in at the Oscars or anywhere else, but uh, yeah, I'm, I think Claire Foy is gonna get in here. I think pretty much everyone in the All of the Strangers cast is gonna get a nod. Uh, so yeah, Claire Foy in at the fourth spot. Fifth and sixth. Ugh. For spot number five, I'm gonna go with Rosamund Pike for Saltburn. Again, British film that opened the BFI Film Festival and Sh Rosamund Pike was an absolute scene stealer in it. Very savage, very funny. Probably the most quoted character of that film, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> I can see Rosamund Pike uh, getting in here. I can also see her missing because yeah, Saltburn is a divisive film. It's a little polarizing and I can feel some people might not want to like give it any acknowledgement because they didn't like it at all. So um, yeah, maybe Rosamund Pike could miss here. But I'm hoping she squeezes in. I think it would be fun to see her in this category. And then the six spot's tough, um, because yeah, we've got like Julianne Moore for May December, Jenny Foster for Nyad, and uh, Cara Jade Myers for Kills the Flower Moon, America Ferreira for Barbie. I would love to see America Ferreira for Barbie to get in here, but I don't know if I really see it as a BAFTA nominated performance. Like she has the, 
impossible to be a woman's speech, but I don't know if that's necessarily enough. But you know, she would uh, also add a little bit more diversity to the mix as well. Although I guess we do have Devon Joe Randolph and uh, Daniel Brooks. But yeah, it would be cool to see America Ferrari. I just love uh, my ugly Betty. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Um, I could see an outcome where Cara J. Myers could surprise here. Again, kind of like Tear You for Past Lives, it's a bit of a bold outcome, but again, like, if they want to make the category as diverse as possible, they could give it to uh, an indigenous woman, uh, like Cara Jane Myers, for Kills of Moon. But I could see her getting in here. I think she did enough to stand out in the film. It feels like a safer prediction to go with someone who had a lot more to do in that movie. Like, Jodie Foster had a lot to do in Nyad. She had a very meaty supporting role. And she has placed in most places. She got the SAG norm, she got the Golden Globe norm. I think she got in a Critics' Choice, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so yes, she, she could just continue that and maybe she does get in for Nyad. I don't have Annette Benning in for Best Actress though, which is why I'm kind of like, you know, reserved about putting Jodie Foster in uh, when I don't have Annette Benning in for Best Actress. So yeah, I just don't know if Nyad's a BAFTA film, but yeah, even Julianne Moore, very respected actress. People did like May December. Um, but yeah, can I see only Julianne Moore getting in when Natalie Pullman's not nominated and Charles Melton didn't even make the long list? It's weird, it's, that's what's holding me back, which is why I feel like maybe Sandra Hula could get the double nom here because The Zone of Interest and Night Before Fall, beloved films, like people really love those movies, like their best picture material. And yeah, maybe they will just get like, Sandra Hula can have two noms, like she's just had a breakout year and she deserves the recognition. So Sandra Hula does feel like a almost safer prediction than uh, Cara Jane Myers, I'd say. But I feel like uh, BAFTA will try and be diverse in their nominations. I mean, they weren't diverse in their winners last year, it was all white, but uh, I think they will try to uh, acknowledge, you know, as many diverse performances as they can. So yeah, I'm gonna put Cara J. Myers in at number six. And next up we have Best Supporting Actor. Because there's no Willem Dafoe or Charles Melton in the long list, it does just become, you know, the four that we're expecting. Robert Downey Jr., Ryan Gosling, Mark Ruffalo, and um, who's the fourth? Robert De Niro. Uh, plus two others. The question is, who are the other two? The thing about the long list for this category is that it's entirely made up of non-diverse performances. It's all white men. <laughs> yeah, you can go anywhere you want really here, but my logic is to go with the two boys from All of the Strangers, uh, Jamie Bell and Paul Meskel, just because of how celebrated that film is. Again, when I saw the film, it was a gut instinct that this is gonna be a film that BAFTA loves. And I feel like, yeah, all the performances could show up here. And I think because Willem Dafoe and Charles Melton aren't in the lineup, it's made the room for them to actually do it, to get in both Paul Meskel and Jamie Bell. So I'm actually gonna predict those two. Um, I feel more confident on Jamie Bell getting in than I do Paul Meskel for some reason. I just think like people really love seeing Jamie Bell in this role, um, even though it was a smaller role than Paul Meskel's. Paul Meskel's just so hot right now, like with After Sun and Gladiator 2. Like, I don't think he needs the nomination as much as Jamie Bell does, but yeah, I can still see him getting in because he is so hot right now. If he weren't to get in, I feel like Dominic Sessa could maybe squeeze in and grab that last spot. Like, uh, he hasn't really placed anywhere. He is in the uh, Critics' Choice um, Young Performance category, whatever that is. I think he's gonna win there. But yeah, maybe he could show up in BAFTA. And if he does get the BAFTA nom, then it's definitely gonna make some people go question whether to put him in their five for the Oscar as well. So if he does get a BAFTA, that would be cool. Cause then like, it's gonna make predicting the Oscars a little bit more exciting in this category as well. So yeah, uh, those are my six, uh, the, the four that everyone's expecting, ah, ah, ah. And actually it's kind of ah, 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 because Ruffalo counts as an ah. So Robert De Niro, Robert Downey Jr., Ryan Gosling, Ruffalo, plus uh, the Oliver Strangers boys, uh, Jamie Bell and uh, Paul Mescal. All right, so next up we have Best Original Screenplay. This will be interesting because again, um, Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach's Barbie has been moved to adapted screenplay at the Oscars. So even though it's still an original screenplay long list, uh, yeah, will it get in a BAFTA? Hmm, <laughs> we will see. I feel quite confident that Anatomy of Fall is getting in here now that it's won Best Screenplay at the Golden Globes. It feels like it's got some momentum behind it, and I do think, you know, it's a film that BAFTA really have liked. So yeah, I'm gonna put it in at number one. Same as Past Lives, that's coming in at number two. And yeah, The Holdovers, I feel quite confident, is getting in here. I'm gonna put Barbie in at number four. I don't know if it can go all the way and win at BAFTA, but I do think it's gonna get acknowledged because, you know, ba Barbie has just been, you know, consistently getting loads of, like, mentions and long lists and, you know, getting heavily nominated elsewhere, Golden Globes, Critics' Choice, so yeah. I do think it's getting in here. It's just, you know, it's been the Barbie bonanza this year. 
And then uh, the fifth spot is between two British female filmmakers. That's uh, Molly Manning Walker for How to Have Sex and Emerald Fennell for Saltburn. And that's tricky. Um, I feel like I'm leaning more towards Molly Manning Walker for How to Have Sex. Uh, just because I know Saltburn made a lot of noise and it's very entertaining. I just think How to Have Sex has more to say and it's just a little bit more respected than Saltburn. This could be where Molly Manning Walker also shows up. I'm gonna give the fifth spot to How to Have Sex, but if Saltburn does squeeze in here, that wouldn't surprise me all that much now. Best Adapted Screenplay. Uh, I'm gonna put all of the strangers in at number one because while I don't think Andrew Higgs gonna get into Best Director, if he did, I would be so happy. I do think that he's gonna get into Best Adapted Screenplay. They're gonna wanna honor him somewhere. So yeah, Best Adapted Screenplay for sure. Yes, Oppenheimer, yes, Poor Things, uh, yes, To Killers of the Flower Moon. What gets the fifth spot though? Oh yeah, The Zone of Interest, again. British film, makes sense. Uh, I think, yeah, it's gonna get in at BAFTAs for screenplay. Yeah, feel quite confident on that. American fiction seems a little odd to leave out, but for some reason I just don't see BAFTA championing the American satire as much as, you know, America will, at the Oscars will. So yeah, I do think American fiction will get in at the Oscars to best adapted screenplay. But yeah, for, I just feel like it's just gonna be a little shy at, um, at BAFTA to, to get into the five. I think the zone of interest will just have a bit more of an edge here than it will there. <laughs> okay, so for casting, I have kind of reflected like best ensemble of, you know, the SAG Awards. So I've gone with Oppenheimer, Kills the Flower Moon, Barbie, and because The Color Purple and American Fiction weren't in the long list for BAFTA, I've actually gone with All of the Strangers and uh, Saltburn. So a Best Animated Feature, there was only eight in the shortlist, but only four will be nominated, and I've gone with uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, The Boy and the Heron. It's gonna come down to those two, but I think Spider-Man has the edge. Uh, Chicken Run, Dawn of the Nugget, again, it's an Ardman film, it's a British staple when it comes to filmmaking, and they, they, we love an Ardman film, don't we? Even if the film was received a bit lukewarm, I think it's still gonna get in here. And um, I think Elemental might get the fourth spot, but um, if Super Mario Brothers gets in here, I won't be all that surprised. It has done fairly well this award season because it made money and people did see it, so yeah, I'd rather Elemental gets in, but if uh, Super Mario Brothers gets in, I. I'll be annoyed, but I won't be all that shocked. So for cinematography, I've gone with Oppenheimer, obviously, Kills the Flower Moon and Poor Things. Then the last two spots, uh, I've got three films in mind, Maestro, Saltburn, and The Zone of Interest. Maestro, I'm a little iffy on now because the love for it seems to have cooled down, but there is no de denying that the cinematography by Matthew Liebertek is spectacular in Maestro. So I think it does get in here, so I'm gonna give Maestro the fourth spot. Then it comes down to either Saltburn or Zone of Interest. The last spot is really difficult. I would, I really do want it to go to Saltburn, but I think there's more respect for the Zone of Interest as a film overall. So it makes me feel more like the Zone of Interest is likely to get in here. But yeah, Linus Sangren's work in uh, Saltburn is just immaculate. Every frame of that movie is just exquisite. But yeah, I can see The Zone of Interest just being a little bit more favored by BAFTA. So I'm gonna give the fifth spot to The Zone of Interest. Next up is costume design. And the obvious two are Barbie and Poor Things. And the last three spots I'm giving to Kills the Flower Moon. And I feel like Wonka could show up here. Like, uh, I, I don't know. It just feels like a, a movie where it's fresh in people's minds. The costumes are quite colorful and eye-catching. So I'm, I'm gonna go with Wonka. And I also thought maybe Napoleon as well, even though like there's only the one signature Napoleon hat thing. I do think like the costume work, especially like on Vanessa Kirby in that movie was phenomenal. So yeah, I'm going Napoleon. Uh, so next up is editing. And I've gone with Oppenheimer, All of the Strangers, Anatomy of a Fall, Kills the Flower Moon and Poor Things. Yeah, I love the editing in All the Strangers, like the the sequence where Paul Mescal and Andrew Scott are in the bar and they're getting high and how everything is layered and overlapped and everything entwines. It's a beautiful example of editing. I don't think it's gonna get into the editing of the Oscars, but I do think it could show up at BAFTA. Uh, but maybe we could see something like, you know, Barbie show up here instead, but uh, I'm hoping it's all of us strangers. Next up is makeup and hair, and I've gone with Maestro, Poor Things, Barbie, Priscilla, the only thing I'm predicting for Priscilla actually, and uh, Oppenheimer. Uh, I know the makeup is quite subtle in Oppenheimer, but uh, I just thought it feels like BAFTA are really gonna love Oppenheimer, so I can see them like giving it lots of nominations. So yeah, I feel like uh, it just might squeeze into makeup and hair just for the subtle aging of Killian Murphy throughout the movie. So yeah, I'm putting Oppenheimer in. And then next up we have score, and the obvious one is Oppenheimer along with Kills of the Flower Moon, 
four things. And then I've actually gone with Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. I think they're gonna do it at BAFTA, I'm hoping so. And then, oddly enough, I wasn't sure on the last one, so I've gone with the zone of interest. And then production design, I've gone for Asteroid City, Barbie, Poor Things, Oppenheimer, and Kills the Flower Moon. Feel pretty good about that category. And then visual effects is a weird one because in the long list we do have Oppenheimer here. It's not eligible at the Oscars, but I do think, yeah, they're probably gonna just, you know, nominate uh, Oppenheimer, even though there's no like visual effects shots in the movie. I feel like they're still gonna acknowledge um, Oppenheimer with a nom at BAFTA. I feel like the two films they're bound to give a lot of nominations to are Oppenheimer and Poor Things. So yeah, I can see Poor Things getting in here, even though I don't think visual effects is the first thing that people think of when they think of um, Poor Things. I think they think of like production design and costumes, the performances, um, the music, but um, yeah, maybe not visual effects is the first thing that jumps to mind. So anyways, and so I've got Oppenheimer and Poor Things, and I've gone with the creator, Napoleon, for the battle scenes, and um, Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. And then for sound, yep, we've gone for Oppenheimer, The Zone of Interest, incredible sound design in that movie, it's haunting, uh, Maestro, of course, and then uh, Napoleon for, again, battle sequences, and I've actually gone with Ferrari for the race sequences. Um, yeah, I feel like... They're very in-your-face movies when it comes to the sound. So yeah, I feel okay with that. Then for film not in the English language, honestly, this was really tough to, to call because every one of the films in the long list feels like BAFTA would go for it, genuinely. Uh, but I feel like um, popularity may help here. You know, more people have heard of the film, more likely they like to have seen it, which is why I feel pretty confident about Anatomy of a Fall past lives in the zone of interest. And then I feel like Fallen Leaves did have quite a good response here, especially at the LFF. Uh, people really liked Fallen Leaves. Uh, so I'm gonna put that in at number four. And then I'm gonna go with Society of Snow. Uh, even though, Sorry, Society of the Snow. I've been saying it wrong all award season. Uh, still not seen it, but um, yeah, it's certainly been visible uh, in the um, award season discussion. If the Taste of Things should appear, or 20 Days in Maripol, or the Teacher's Lounge, I would not be surprised, because yeah, they're, they're all really good movies. The documentary feature I've gone for, 20 Days in Maripol, uh, American Symphony, um, Beyond Utopia, uh, The Deepest Breath, and greetings from Switzerland, guys. Uh, I wasn't happy with the fifth entry that I previously recorded, just didn't seal me right. I had still a Michael J. Fox originally, then I was just like, as I was sitting here editing it, I didn't feel good about it. So I was like, you know what, just switch it to something else. And uh, so I've decided to go with uh, Little Richard, I Am Everything. That is, that's my fifth spot now for documentary feature. And then for outstanding British film, there's 10 in this category. Uh, typically, it's good to go with films that, you know, have made a fair bit of buzz this year. So uh, I'm going to go with All of Us Strangers, Chicken Run, Dawn of the Nugget, uh, The Great Escaper, How to Have Sex, Poor Things, Rye Lane, uh, Saltburn, Scrapper, Wonka, and The Zone of Interest. Yeah, those are my 10. Uh, could see something like Deepest Breath pop up, or maybe The Old Oak, you know, because we love a bit of Ken Loach. So I feel pretty confident on those 10 getting in. And then finally, we've got Outstanding Debut by a British uh, writer, director, or producer. And so I have gone with The End We Start From, How To Have Sex, uh, Polite Society, Right Lane, at uh, Right Lane, sorry, Rye Lane, <laughs> and Scrapper. Yeah, those are my five for uh, Outstanding Debut. But there you have it, guys. Those are my predictions for the nominations for the 2024 BAFTA Film Awards. What do you think of my nominations? Do you agree with mine? Do you disagree? Who are you predicting for your nominations? Do you have any wild theories as to who might show up? Yeah, whatever you have to say about your predicted uh, nominees for the BAFTA, let me know in the comment section down below. I will try to do a BAFTA reactions live stream if I can whilst I'm in Switzerland. Again, it's all depending on if I've got time while I'm out there because I'm going to be busy doing my job. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I will try. I will endeavor to do it, but uh, I can't guarantee it. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, hit the little like button for me if you want more movie, TV, and Oscars related content. Don't forget to click subscribe and thank you so much for watching for more things related to movies tv the oscars and popcorn culture i'm lee carefield and i'll see you next time